On one hand, a feminist will tell you that men should protect and defend women. You know, they should pay for the first date, open doors for women, buy them flowers, propose marriage, and ultimately they should provide for the women and the family. But then on the other hand, the feminist women, you know, these same women will claim that, oh no, I'm strong and independent. You know, I don't, I don't depend on a man to uh, provide for me. I could provide for myself. And, and I'm equal with a man. Anything a man can do, I can do. <laughs> you know, these are the same women who won't hesitate to take you to divorce court. These are the same women who say, well, I'm not going to fight in the war. I can't do that. I'm a woman, you know. Or these are the same women who say, hey, uh, we need to separate sports for men and women because women are, are, are not equal with men. <laughs> And these are the same women who would demand in divorce court that your children be taken from you. And they demand that you pay them child support. And as they're receiving this child support from you, they'll, pray, they'll parade around as if they're this amazing single mother who's doing everything all by themselves. When in reality, um, they're having uh, the, 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 the government take money from the man and give it to her under threat of force you know do these women really want equality is it equality they're seeking after or are they seeking after superiority are they really fair do they really want a fair even playing field or are they looking for um, special treatment or are they just being greedy <laughs> greetings friends and colleagues it is Sean Elvis beautiful day here in Denver, Colorado. Still quarantined, uh, but there's people walking around uh, the park. But anyways, in today's video, I wanted to discuss the wickedness of the sin of greed. And, you know, so, so what is greed? A lot of people kind of, um, well, we're going to discuss greed today. You know, the dictionary itself says that greed is an intense, selfish desire, especially for material goods, um, things like that, you know, the key word there uh, is selfish. It's a selfish desire, you know, and I want to talk about selfishness of men and women briefly. You know, if you open up your Bible to the book of First Kings chapter 10, that's where I'm going to read from today, you know, and, and we're going to read a story of King Solomon. Now, King Solomon um, was the son of King David. He was the third king of, uh, of the nation of Israel back in the Old Testament. And the interesting thing to note about King Solomon, as it applies to this message, is that King Solomon was uh, conceived in adultery. Now, granted, it wasn't his fault that King David committed adultery with Bathsheba. You know, King Solomon couldn't help that. But what, what, what we're going to see from this passage, and I want, what I want you to take away from this, is that King David didn't teach Solomon, Solomon about his mistakes that he made in his life. He didn't teach... Uh, Solomon that hey what dad did was bad you know and don't be like dad because I was terrible you know I'm going to train you to be different than me and and things like that so anyway we're going to start in uh, 1st Kings chapter 10 verses 14 and I'm not going to read the whole uh, the whole thing I just want to highlight a few verses so here we go verse 14 uh, says now the weight of the gold that came to Solomon in one year was 603 score and six talents of gold. I don't, I don't know how much gold that is, but that's a lot of gold, okay? Like we're talking about hundreds and thousands of dollars here, right? A lot of gold. Um, let's continue. Beside that, he had, of the, he had of the merchantmen and of the traffic of the spice merchants and of all the kings of Arabia and of the governors of the country. And King Solomon made 200 targets of beaten gold. 600 shekels of gold went to one target. So everything's pretty much lined up with gold. Check this out. And he made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three pounds of gold went to one shield. And the king put them in the house of, of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with the best gold. The throne had six steps and the in the top of the throne was round behind and there were stays on either side on the on the place of the sea and two lions stood beside the stays and 12 lions stood there on the one side and on the other uh, upon the six steps and there was not and there was not the like made in any kingdom 
So basically, he's got the most elaborate kingdom of all other nations. Um, everything's decked with gold and super fancy, right? And this is, you know, this is where King David lived. This is uh, his palace. Um, anyway, uh, let's continue on. For the king had at sea a navy of Tharshish. Um, I th um, so basically, he's talking about ships and the navy with the navy of Hiram. Once in three years came the navy of Thar ships, bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. So basically, he's ha he always has this constant uh, shipment um, every every three years of, of just tons of gold and and all kinds of precious silver and ivory and all kinds of stuff. And, and the last verse I want to check there is uh, it says, "So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom." So. Basically, we see that King Solomon was living the dream, right? He was living the dream. He had, he had fame, fortune, all the riches you can ever want, you know. And, and he had every material possession that you could think of. He had power. He was the king. You know, he could command a whole army to do his bidding. And also, I'm sure he was a very handsome man, right? Because as far as women goes, oh, man. Did King Solomon have women? You know, I think <laughs> I think King Solomon takes the cake on all of us for uh, the amount of women he had in his lifetime. Let's let's jump down to chapter eleven, and I briefly want to show you this passage um, in First Kings uh, chapter eleven. The Bible says, "But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, <clears throat> women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidions, and Hittites." So, you know, as we see King Solomon even married a royal Egyptian princess, right? I'm sure she was gorgeous, beautiful, rich. So, I mean, King Solomon, he just, whatever woman he wanted, oh, I want, I want, the, I want the princess over there in Egypt. Well, I'll take her, right? He, he just had everything. And check this out in verse 2. That, that wasn't enough for him, right? That was not enough for him. Just the princess of Egypt was not enough. It says, Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in... Man, I'm sorry about this wind. I hope that's not messing things up. Kind of windy. Anyway. Um, of the nation... Verse 2. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them neither shall they uh shall they come in unto you for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods solomon clave unto these in love so god told him hey don't take any wives who are foreigners who don't worship um you know the same god as you who aren't the same religion and he, and he had seven wives or excuse me 700 wives <laughs> oh wow princesses and 300 concubines and his wife wives turned away his heart for it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, and was with the and and was the heart as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Asheroth, the goddess of Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as as. David his father you know and, and remember David King David was, was man this wind David was seen as, as a man after God's own heart right well King Solomon you know I guess seeing seeing the way King David uh, ended his his um, I guess what you call uh, his kingdom or his anyway when when King David was was um, transferring over power to King Solomon you know it, it didn't go so well in fact you know, King Solomon even even sought after to kill his his own dad, King David, um, at one point. And you know, I mean, you would you would think King Solomon lived a happy life, right? With all these uh, with all these wives, he had seven hundred wives. I'm sure they were all beautiful. <laughs> I mean, princesses from different kingdoms. And but look down at verse nine. You know, let's jump down to First Kings chapter eleven, verse nine. The Bible says, And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. So, you know, all these material things, he had all the gold he wanted, all the fame, all the power, all the women. 
all the treasures, but God was angry with him. You know, all these material things turned him away, just like God said they would. You know, these these material things are going to turn you away from me, Solomon. Don't 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 uh, pay attention to those. You know, all the earthly treasures, all the women, they turn him away from God, and that you know that's exactly what I see a lot of women, feminist women, uh, nowadays. You know, they want all their equality or so-called equality, all their rights. They want the right to wear pants and, and, and dress like whores, but you know they they also want the right. Oh, don't shame me for dressing like this. You know, <laughs> don't don't say that I'm doing anything wrong, even though that God says in the Bible that women should dress modestly. You know, they want the right to divorce their husbands, um, and and take take uh, their husbands' children away from him, even though God said to submit to your husbands and and uh, and, and and be obedient to them. These, these uh, feminist women, they want the right to sleep around before marriage and fornicate with man after man. And, and um, you know, I'm reminded of the song, the famous song, Next, by Ariana Grande. She just, she teaches all the, all the young girls, next, next, who's next? I'll, just, I'll, go th- I'll go through you like Solomon went through all these, his wives. You know, so why, why did God said to avoid these things? You know, was it because God wants us to have, uh, doesn't want us to have enough I'm sorry. Is it because God doesn't want us to have an abundant life? Or do you think it's because God wants to protect us? You know, ever since feminism came on the scene in the 70s, really blew up in the 70s, women's equality, or so-called equality, right? There have been studies that women's overall happiness has gone down, has plummeted. You know, women were happier back in the days when they would just stay home and be a housewife and now that they're in the workplace women are more miserable why is that you know because i think it's because of greed right because here's the thing you know if a woman uh wants to go out in the workplace that's fine but she's gonna have to sacrifice her family because you know in order to have children you have to have children young right and but in order to have a career you have to postpone children because it's, it's gonna it's when, when you get pregnant you're kind of handicapped you know you're kind of relying on the man to, to bring you resources and to provide for you so if the woman wants to go out there and provide for herself and have a career she can't do that while at the same time as having children and depending on a man right so you know a lot of these feminist women you know they sacrifice their children um, to these false gods of greediness you know, because let me tell you something. These women aren't postponing having children, or excuse me, they, these women may be postponing having children, but they they for sure aren't postponing having sex. You know, so they're going out and having sex, but but they're using birth control, or they're using abortion. You know, two wicked things that God that God rejects. You know, so in in their pursuit of the of their career, it's coming at the cost of their family. So. You know, feminism has told them they can have both, but they, but, but can they really? You know, just like God told um, King Solomon, He said, "Hey, look, you could either serve me, or you can go out and have all these gold and all these riches and all these wives. You know, but you can't have both. You know, they, because they, these these feminist women, these young girls, and, you know, it's so sad that you know they teach these girls that it's okay to give away their virginity to men who aren't their husbands." Right, to 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 not get married before mar- uh to not have sex before marriage anymore, you know they have to sacrifice their children to the god of greed, because they know that hey if I become pregnant my career is over I can't can't go to school and can't go to work anymore, and, and they have to sacrifice their children and send them off to somebody else to raise them so that they can go to work, right instead of staying home and raising them, like God said. Let me, t- let, me, let me tell you this, you know, there's more single mothers in this generation than in any other time period in human history. And statistically, you know, children raised by single mothers end up either in prison or, you know, these women become prostitutes, if the, you know, if they're, if, if they're raising daughters, you know, and, you know, statistically. You know, I'm not saying that there aren't some single mothers out there that, that can get the job done. But statistically speaking, they're not getting the job done, you know. Because, you know, you take a single mother who's, for example, she's raising her daughter. And, and then remember back uh, King Solomon, right, was raised by King David. So what, what ends up happening is, is the mother does not 
um, teach the daughter not to do what mommy did, right? They're not going to teach their daughter, hey, mommy was a whore, okay? Don't be a whore like mommy. Mommy was bad, right? Because that would be too shameful for them to admit that, right? So, you know, they don't want to admit to their daughter that they whore themselves around, so they sweep it under the rug. And then what, what ends up happening is the, is the daughter grows up seeing mommy and saying, oh, well, mommy doesn't say anything bad about this. I guess it's okay for me to do it too, right? And they become worse, just like King Solomon. He saw, he saw King David uh, grow up and... Uh, commit adultery with Bathsheba. Well, Dad didn't say anything that was wrong with this. Dad didn't preach against it. <laughs> so I guess it's okay for me to do it. And then, and then Solomon goes out and does even worse, right? You know, so, you know, the, just like Solomon, you know, and, the, and, you know, these women, you know, they, 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 they avoid men who are going to, who, who, who would preach to their daughters that hey don't do this that's wrong they're going to avoid those men like the plague because they don't want to admit it you know they're running away from it you know, they so you know these 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 poor um children grow up in a, in a in a home where they're not getting the preaching that they need because because um you know their mom she's she's too ashamed to admit it that, that she made a mistake so she doesn't give them the hard preaching that they need but, you know, I'm getting off topic here for a bit. So uh, let me try to bring it back into focus on, on greed here. So, you know, we know greed, we can see that greed can lead us to disobeying God, right? Because we're so focused on, on, on our material things and what we want, whether it's women or our gold or fame or power, whatever it is. You know, and, and, and even worse, it can cause your children to fall into that sin that's even worse, right? So how can we avoid being greedy? You know, does that mean that, we shouldn't desire anything because if I don't desire anything, I won't be greedy, right? But I, I want to flip over to the book of Ecclesiastes. So it goes Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes in, in the Old Testament. And flip over to Ecclesiastes chapter 6. You know, this book is believed to have been written by King Solomon, right? King Solomon, supposedly the wisest man um, to have ever lived. And, you know, well, when we're reading this, I want you to think about things that you desire, I want you to think about the things you desire, and I want you to think about why do you desire them. You know, let, let's read chapter 6 right here. Excuse me. The Bible says, There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is common among men, a man to whom God hath given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth, yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth it. This is vanity, and it is an evil disease. First off, you know, everything, everything we have comes from God, right? The Bible says that um, in this verse that a man to whom God hath given riches. So God gives us riches. God gives us everything that we have, our clothes on our back, the food in our stomach. You know, that's why, that's why I always pray um, before a meal, before I eat, and I give thanks to God for it. So whatever you have, whatever God has blessed you with, you need, you need to be thankful for it, right? And there's always something to be thankful for, always. Because if, if you don't say thanks for what you have, you know, then, then you're going to become greedy because you think, oh, well, I deserve more, so give me more. And then, and then that's going to destroy you. But what's this evil disease Solomon uh, speaks of in verse 2? Let's, let's read on in verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 3 says if a man begat a hundred children and live many years so that uh, so that the days of his years be many and his soul be not filled with good and also that he have no he have no burial I say that an untimely birth is better than he for he committeth in it in with vanity and departeth in darkness and his name shall be covered with darkness so the, so the book of Ecclesiastes is a, is a book about vanity greediness right wanting material things for 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 your own pleasure right and it warns against that and the bible's saying that you know we need to be content with what we have you know what and, and what do we have you know like let's say you you think you don't have i don't have anything sean everything was taken from me <laughs> i'm in prison right well even the apostle paul said he rejoiced in prison why because if nothing else, we have God. We have Jesus Christ. So we have salvation. We have assurance of eternal security in heaven. 
and we know that our sins are paid for, right? They're, they're forgiven by the blood of Jesus. And, you know, and we didn't deserve that. I didn't, I didn't deserve to have my sins forgiven. You know, we didn't deserve to have uh, our Savior, our King Jesus Christ, come, come from heaven down here and die for us, sacrifice His life for us. So desiring anything else other than that could be seen as greedy. Hey, you're greedy. You know, God could say, hey, I've already given you my Son, Jesus Christ. I've already given you salvation. What more do you want? What more do you ask for? You know, God says he, he'll, he'll take care of us as long as we o- obey Him. He'll give us our, our basic needs, food on, food on our back and clothes on our stomach and a roof over our head. So desiring anything else would be greedy, you know. So we need to be content with just obeying the commandments of God and not trying to step outside those because as soon as we step outside those, we fall into the sin of greediness, which will destroy us. The Bible says in the, in the book of Moses that a king is not supposed to multiply wives unto himself. But what did King Solomon do? He got greedy. And that's exactly what he did. And it destroyed him. It, it, it ruined his kingdom. He lost his kingdom. He lost his, his what could have been a dynasty. Right? And, and a lot of MGTOW guys think that, oh, I'm just going to go out here and I'm going to go sleep with, sleep with as many women as I want. And that's going to make me happy. No, it's not. That's going to make you greedy. And it's going to lead to your destruction. And I'm sorry to tell you that, but the truth hurts sometimes. You know, it, it destroyed King Solomon. It destroyed his, his relationship with his family. I mean, you think all those 700 wives got along with each other? <laughs> I'm sure there was fighting every single day in that, in that household. How would you like to grow up in a family with 700 different mothers? Imagine that, right? I mean, the sin of greediness is wicked, guys, and it all starts with not being thankful, not giving thanks for what you have, not being content with what God has given you right now in your life. Listen, guys, you know, I don't want this message to get so long. But I, 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 do, want, I do want you to see a few more things. So skip down to uh, chapter 6, verse 12, and I'm almost finished. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 6, 12, For who knoweth what is good for a man in this life, all the days of his vain life which he spendeth as a shadow? For whom can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? See, the, the point is, guys none of us can take anything with us when we die we don't know uh, when our last breath is going to be taken on this earth and at some point we're going to die we're not we're not gonna and you know whether whether we're married or not we're not gonna have our wife anymore after we're dead we're not gonna have that fancy house anymore or, or whatever it is that our all our jewelry all our gold whatever you treasure here on earth you know so and even if you don't die right like even while you're alive you know your spouse can leave you they can divorce you you know your your house can get repossessed you could lose your uh your job your all your jewelry can get robbed from you right people can take your stuff you know so I, i'm saying you know to avoid being greedy you know we shouldn't get too attached to things in the first place and i'm not i'm not saying that you shouldn't love your wife you know if you're married you know of course you should love your wife i'm not saying you shouldn't value um, your gold and keep it in a safe and keep it protected, right? That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you shouldn't be proud of the of the nice house you worked for. But, but what I'm saying is greediness enters in when we stop obeying the commandments of God. When we put our desires of material things selfishly before following God's commandments. When we put ourself, our desires first that's when greed enters in you know when we do our will instead of putting God's commandments his will we need to we need to put God's commandments those need to take precedence you know an an example I can give you is like King Solomon right let's say a man he already has a wife but he sees another woman he likes right and 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 instead of being thankful and saying thank you God for my beautiful wife you know um, he wants to go out and get another wife he wants to take another wife, you know. He sees another woman and says, oh, I want her too. No, like, no, man. Bro, you're like, you're being greedy. You know, God already gave you a wife, okay? You, you guys know what I'm saying? You see the difference there? You know, when it's not saying like, hey, you can't go, you can't go have a wife. You shouldn't desire a wife, right? Like, if you're single, you should be content with being single and say, hey, thank you, God. But if God gives you a wife, hey, amazing. Then praise God for that wife, you know? Basically, what I'm saying is your, your heart should be in the right place. Our hearts should be in the right place. And those, and those, if there's, if those, 
if our focus is on obeying God and keeping the commandments, then we won't be selfish, you know? Like for a woman, a feminist woman especially, you know, there's nothing wrong with desiring a husband, right? There's nothing wrong with desiring that a man take care of you and provide for you. But if you're going to go out there and say, hey, look, well, I'm going to provide for myself and I'm going to take care of myself and I don't need no man. I'm strong and independent. And then you're going to go and, and, and put a cherry on top of that and say, and I want a husband who's going to provide for me and, and, and make more money than me and, and, and take care of me. It's like, whoa, 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 like, woman, I think you're being a little greedy there. You you want you want your cake and you want to eat it too? Like that's not how it works. You, know, you you can't you can't demand that you have the right to dress like a harlot and go out and and run the streets and prostitute your body out, and then and then turn around and say, well, I don't want men preaching against how I'm dressed. You know, I don't want you to say that I'm I'm dressing wrong. Well, I, I think you're being a little greedy, right? You you want you want it both ways there. You can't have it both ways. You know, you can't have everything. So in closing, I'll close with this. You know, let's thank God for what we have today. Um, lest he take it away, whatever it is, you know, be thankful for God. You know, what, like what if, what if whatever you didn't say thanks for today was taken away from you tomorrow? You know, you'd, you'd start saying thank you for everything, right? Thank you for this shirt. Thank you for these glasses. Thank you for these earphones. Thank you for all these people around here. Thank you for the trees. Thank you, you know. I mean, the list could go on and on, right? So... The point is, our happiness doesn't come from material things, or at least it should not come from material things, because that could lead to greediness, you know. So, our happiness should come from serving God and keeping the commandments, and when you do that, you know, nobody can rob you. Nobody can rob you of your joy, of your happiness. But if your joy is coming from material things, if you think, oh man, if I have that thing over there, then I'll be happy, you know, that's, you need to check yourself, because you could enter into the land of greediness, which will... Um, take you away from God's grace and eventually destroy you. Anyway, that's my message for the day, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something and I hope you're, you guys give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. I'm, I'm thankful for God. He gives me an opportunity to preach these messages um, on, on the internet for you guys to listen to. That's, that's a blessing to me and, and I take it seriously and I, and I do hard work and study to uh, try to give you guys a wholesome, a wholesome message. But anyway, um, that's my message for the day, guys. You guys have a great day. God bless you. And as always, I'm going to give God the last word. So, um, I'm going to read from the New Testament, chapter 6, verses starting in verse 19 through 21. You guys have a good day. God bless. And these are Jesus' words. This is Jesus preaching. Matthew chapter 6 says, verse 19, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and dust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor dust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. God bless.